Hello and welcome to Altcoin XP. My name is Anthony and today let's look at the cryptocurrency incentivized web server decentralizing project called MateSafe. This will be part one of my MateSafe series, discussing a little bit about what MateSafe is and my thoughts on their data threshold plan to give SafeCoin value. But first, a short disclaimer. You should listen to my opinions and thoughts in this video. However, you should also do your own research and seek out the opinions of others before investing any money. My videos are my interpretations of the information I found. Sources for my information are in the video description. I try to understand these complex topics as best as I can, but I can get things wrong. Therefore, I should only be a small source of information for you. Now on to the show. MadeSafe was conceived 11 years ago by David Irvine. What sparked the idea was his realization that servers are insecure because they store end-user information. Web servers are a central point where anyone cunning enough or rich enough can steal your data. His initial solution was to distribute server-stored user data between home user computers. Instead of data being stored on a central server, pieces of it are encrypted and distributed between every computer connected to the MateSafe network. The MateSafe network is called the Safe Network. With your data being distributed in parts across locations, it's much harder to break privacy and carry out surveillance. Over time, this idea evolved into having all server functions distributed between user computers, processing power, storage, RAM, and bandwidth. This became a vision to completely decentralize and distribute the internet by running everything on user computers. This idea is not new. I remember hearing about a different company experimenting with this five years ago, and I thought it was a really cool idea. There was also a similar project I heard of a few years ago called BitCloud. In 2014, David came to the conclusion that his project would benefit from having a cryptocurrency implemented in it to incentivize people to operate MadeSafe nodes, develop websites and apps on the MadeSafe network, and develop the MadeSafe network itself. That cryptocurrency invented is called SafeCoin and its operation to pay nodes is based on a proof of resource idea. Nodes that share more system resources earn more safe coins. His idea to implement a cryptocurrency is understandable. Like everyone else, I also rethought how everything in the world works after studying Bitcoin to figure out what I could change with the technology. The problem I have with him adding a currency is that it complicates the project even further than it already is. I'll be expanding on all of its complexities in later videos, to hopefully show the huge scope of this project. Upon hearing about this, people realized you can't just make your own currency and add it to your project to pay people who participate. Adding your own currency means you have to create a whole economy for that currency. Otherwise, there'd be all sell pressure, no buy pressure, making your currency worthless. No one will want to buy SafeCoin because you can't use it on anything. So I started a quest to find MadeSafe's economy. What is the use of SafeCoin? Why would people need to buy it? I found a MadeSafe blog post by Nick Lambert, who has worked as a chief operating officer for MadeSafe for the last five years, explaining some ideas of how the SafeCoin economy might work. In short, the idea is to have users spend SafeCoins to pay for network resources after they exceed a free usage threshold. I have heard of ideas of charging for read and write access to the MadeSafe network after they go over a specific data threshold. And I also heard ideas of providing free read access to data but charging people after they reach a specific upload threshold. Both are essentially data caps, which I don't mind as long as they are monitored by the network operators to provide fair access to everyone. Technology advances often, and yesterday's data cap can limit today. What happens if there's big demand on the network for the latest, greatest resolution video? Say, super duper definition ultra 16K video. Since data size is larger, more people will hit the data cap sooner and need to purchase safe coins to spend on made safe network resources, which increases safe coin price. This makes safe coin holders happy. However, this disincentivizes made safe operators to increase the data cap because their safe coins are worth more when there is a lower cap. This is essentially an incentive to run made safe at near capacity for as long as they can to inflate safe coin price. If the data cap is set too low, it will force people to purchase SafeCoin to use the network, or they will abandon using the network altogether. If the data cap is too high, it will give little to no value to SafeCoin because not enough consumers need to purchase SafeCoin to use the network. We already don't like how ISPs impose data caps on us. How would we like it if the whole internet ran this way? 
Personally, I'm fine with the current ISP data cap model as Comcast practiced it. Years ago, Comcast's 250 gigabyte monthly data cap never limited most users because Comcast put the cap on hold when users started to complain about it affecting them. If MadeSafe puts its cap on hold for reevaluation, their whole economy can stop working because their whole economy is based off of this data threshold. So I'm not saying a data cap business model is a bad idea as long as it's not your core business model. Comcast didn't intend to support their business by charging over a certain data threshold the way MadeSafe intends to support their economy. This is one reason that I'm concerned with MadeSafe economy. And what about content creators? The internet that we know and love today is created by them. So how are they paid? All I could find is some pipe dream in the form of MadeSafe blog posts basically saying a bunch of what ifs. What if ads funneled through companies like Google were not how we monetized content? What if content creators were tipped directly by the consumers? What if websites had subscriptions to help pay content creators? What if we watermarked all content with unique IDs to track the content and pay out accordingly and automatically? Safe network consumers will earn safe coins by sharing their computer resources, then use those safe coins to tip content creators. It all sounds good on the surface, but I have some concerns with how this relates to the data cap business model. I feel that the data threshold where people pay more as they use more resources will result in an unfair internet. If the safe network is pay per read access, consumers will be less inclined to watch video on the safe network because it costs them more money instead of reading an article. And even if it's only pay per write access after a specified data threshold, content creators will need to spend more money to upload their videos to the safe network. Because of this, it seems that not all content and not all users will be treated fairly. They can simply argue, well, the data cap will be large enough to not limit any services like that. But my response would be that only a small percent of hardcore power users would be the sole ones providing value to Safecoin. That seems imbalanced. Well, those are my initial concerns about MadeSafe's economy via paper data usage. The more I research, the more questions I have. I'll be releasing more concerns and parts just because it's too much for me to research and put together one giant video. I'm sure it's probably too much for you guys to watch too. What I see so far is a lot of sensationalism in their blog posts and a vision that is too large to work. There's just so many complexities that I don't see solid solutions for. Hopefully this series is useful and helps you decide what you should invest in. If it has been, please donate to me via Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash to ensure continued creation of these videos. The addresses are available on screen and in the video description. If you prefer supporting me with US dollars, you can do so via the Patreon link uh, in the description. Lastly, follow me on Twitter at AllPointXP. Take care and talk to you soon. Thank you.